PTI last night. It's Tony Kornheiser. Feels like 40. No, yeah. it doesn't. 20 years. So let me tell you years. something. Let me tell Well, you know the old slogan is that days go long and years go quick. Um, I have friends from high school who called me today. They found my number and they called me. And they saw it and they said, well, I didn't even know you were on TV. 20 years, huh? And I'm thinking, what? What? You didn't even know? Really? You didn't even know? My oh, goodness. Well, Welcome to PTI, boys and girls, in today's episode, a new book on Brady Belichick. The Bears may leave Chicago and Shohei Otani's future with the Angels, but we begin today with baseball. Last night, the Cardinals beat the Brewers to officially clinch a wild card spot and run their winning streak to 17 games in a row. The Yankees beat Toronto for the seventh straight win, and they are now two games clear for the first wild card in the American League. And the Mariners beat Oakland to pull within one half game of Boston for the second wild card. In the NL East division race, Atlanta beat Philadelphia to widen that gap to three and a half games. Wilbon, which team had the biggest win? Tony, I am a little more fixated on the American League right now, which is weird for me, primarily a National League Cubs guy. But I think Seattle was the big winner. I mean, the, the Red Sox were the big losers. I know they're still in, you know, slotted in right now. But their schedule... We said yesterday, I think we agreed, they need to win five out of their final six to go out and lose the first one. I think Seattle was the winner. Seattle needed to win. So did the Yankees to stay ahead, but the Yankees did. I think Seattle, by closing the gap, that was a big win for them. The Cardinals are cruising. I think mean, the Cardinals may need to lose a couple at the end just to, you know, avoid that old college basketball thing. Do you want to go undefeated? Because they're like a college basketball season now. 17 straight wins for the Cardinals. So it ain't the Cardinals. I didn't think it was the Yankees. Boston, big loser. Seattle, big winner for me. You know, you surprised me on this one. Why? I was certain you would say it was the Cardinals. And I was about to refute you on the Cardinals by saying, to use your word, they've been cruising lately. You know they're going to get the wild card yeah. spot. They're way ahead of Cincinnati. They're way ahead of San Diego. So last night was essentially a formality, even though 17 games in a row is huge. I thought you'd pick the Cardinals because you always talk about the Cardinals. I agree with you completely that Boston was the big loser, even though that was not in the question. You cannot lose to last place teams. No. I mean, you can't squander no. No. an easy schedule with Chris Sale on the mound. That's a sure ticket out of the playoffs completely. And, and the only thing I would say, and I agree about Seattle because their story is the most compelling since yes. they haven't been in the haven't playoffs in, in 20 years. years. Yeah. And they've, yeah, they've now won nine out of 10. Nobody expected them to be here. They pretty much eliminated Oakland last night, and they're breathing down the necks of Boston. Of Sox, I, would just, I would put Philadelphia sort of in the same category, because that's a big game. I don't think you can make up three and a half games with five to play. Well, it's been done. And, and talk about, <laughs> yeah, talk about <laughs> squandering easy schedules. Yeah. I remember back right after the All-Star game, everybody said Philadelphia would have the easiest schedule for the rest of the way. So I think, I think we're in accord on this whole thing, but it also could change tonight. Tony, could change tonight. Are you, look, I was born, I was alive, I was just starting to follow baseball. I was, I don't know, eight or nine years old. Do you remember when the Gene Mark Philadelphia Phillies blew something yes. worse than three and a half with five? It was about yeah, that, right? The, the Phillies had been down this it road It was the before. worst ever. Yeah. They had two pitchers, that's all they had. It was the worst ever. You know, and ultimately it cost Mock his job, yeah. right? So, yeah, I, I do remember that. I think I was in grad school that year. <laughs> yeah. In grad school. You might not even have been in high school. Let's move to Shohei Otani's future with the Angels. Earlier this week, the team star pitcher and slugger was asked whether he likes playing for Anaheim, and he says, yeah, but added, quote, but more than that, I want to win. That's the biggest thing for me, so I'll leave it at that. Close quote. Angels manager Joe Madden weighed in, quote, if anybody misconstrues that as though he wants to leave, that's trying to connect some dots that were not at all what he said. Close quote. Tony, you with Madden? Um, so I think we have to establish, first of all, that Shohei Otani says the, these things in Japanese, not in English. Right. And they are translated for us. Yes. And it is very possible that a lot of nuance and a lot of context gets lost in translation. That's very possible. What I heard him say, well, not what I heard, what I was told he said, was I want to win. 
The implication to me with a team that's under 500 and not in the playoffs is that he could look elsewhere at some point. Joe Madden's job is to put a happy face on this and to say to people, hey, we all want to win and show he loves it here. And that makes everybody happy. So I don't know if it's misconstrued. I'll give this analogy. Doc Rivers has tried to walk himself out of the corner that he walked himself into by answering a question saying that he wasn't sure that Ben Simmons was a championship guard. And Doc Rivers said, no, 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 no. That's being misconstrued. I'm not sure that's being misconstrued. So I'm not sure Otani is being misconstrued. Apparently what was read to me today in a Japanese interview that was then translated in, for a Japanese outlet, he said they haven't done anything since the trade deadline. Those words are true. It sounds more like he would entertain leaving. Yeah, it's more of an indictment. I, we're not at the point where, look, the two sports where it seems easiest to force your way out are basketball, the NBA, and baseball, MLB. You can raise a ruckus. You can just say, I don't want to be here. Yes, the salaries are guaranteed. They're big salaries. There's big money. But you can also say, get me out of here. Trade me. I don't want to be here. It's happened in both sports. Happens more recently in the NBA. In basketball. But Tony, yeah, if yeah, he yeah. wants out, first of all, he could have a clause in his contract that says he can go back to Japan if he wants. We can go there, and I'm sure there'll be a bidding war for him in Japan. But... The Angels don't ever win. Not the last, what, what has it been, 20 years almost since the Angels were at that level of winning? And so they have yeah. these all-star players. They have these great players. And we're told that Trout is the best player in the game. And they don't even get a whiff. By the time October 1st rolls around, they've been done. So if, if, if Otani, is, if he's looking at that and saying, I don't want any part of this, we're going to have to hear that. And you're right. Things get lost in translation. We're going to have That's to have right. this pinned Good down. movie, by the way. It Lost was. in Translation with your boy movie. Bill Murray was a really Very good movie. Good. Look, up. the Angels need pitching. Otani pitches and hits. He's the most important player in all of Not baseball. Enough. I'm a Nats fan. Not enough. I see this with Juan Soto. Juan Soto's all the Nats have now. They got rid of everything else. They want to re-sign him. But maybe he looks around and he says, do I want to waste my productive years on a team where I'm the only guy and they can pitch around me all the time? And another thing, both Soto and Otano, they, Otani, they didn't grow up here. They're not from here. They may not have allegiances to a certain city or a certain region. True, too. Right? They may not. True that. They could just go. That's the way it works. Tom Brady, who went. Tom Brady <laughs> returns to New England on Sunday night. His first time back since signing with Tampa Bay. Seth Wickersham of ESPN has a book coming out entitled It's Better to Be Feared. In it, Wickersham writes about the disconnect between Brady and Belichick. He cites an incident that when Brady was ready to leave the Patriots after all those years, he wanted to say goodbye to Belichick in person, and Belichick insisted they do it over the phone, something Belichick denied at a press conference today. Wilbon, what are your takeaways from what you've read? <laughs> I don't have any takeaways, Tony. I'll be entertained by it. It sounds like this is very... I mean, th certainly thorough, you know, reporting, and I'll be entertained by it when I get to it. When I get to it, this is not, you know, top of mind to me. I'm not a New Englander. But Belichick-Brady, the relationship is certainly fascinating. The dynamic is fascinating. Um, I don't, I'm not going to have any takeaways. I can promise you that. But I will like the ping-pong effect, the back and forth of Brady and Belichick. I, I have never been doing this as long as I've been doing this. I've never had a conversation with Tom Brady. I don't know what to make of Tom Brady, what he says, what his agendas are. I have had several with Bill Belichick and several encounters, social encounters, at length encounters with Bill Belichick. As you know, you used to tease me. You would say, oh, you love Belichick. I don't know that I love him. I'm fascinated yeah. by him. I am. Yeah. And so I'll just sit back and watch the back and forth between the two takeaways, I'm not that vested. So this doesn't surprise me at all anymore. It used to surprise me, but not now when I hear that two people have worked together a long time don't like each other. You find out you think they like each other, you find out they hate each other. Is that you and hint, I are the only two people way? who like each <laughs> other. You know, no, you and I are the only people who like each other, still, and it's possible today you don't like me nah, anymore. I still love you. Still. Belichick and Brady, Belichick and Brady are cold blooded assassins. Yes, they are. Both of them. Yes. That's why they worked so well together. And they also became convinced through success that they were right in everything that they did. It's a wow to me if this is a true story that Belichick said, no, we'll just do it by phone. It's a wow. But 
If it happened, Mike, I would if it happened it. after Brady had declared that he was leaving, <laughs> yeah. then, then Belichick would say, I can't save the situation. Why am I wasting my time on to Cincinnati? Yeah. That seems in character. Yes. The thing that I like about this game is that you, you cannot root for both in this game. You have to pick a side and declare. I will declare for Brady. I will say that Brady, I thought, you know, put his salary lower to help the team for a long time. And, and they should have listened to some of the things he said. This is Aaron Rodgers' complaint in Green Bay. It was the Sean Watson's complaint in Houston. You're not listening to me. You don't give me any input. And to Football this point, coaches Mike, and GMs don't Brady listen to has players. the next laugh. Not the last laugh. Yeah. But the next laugh. Tony, so the far. thing we agree on, they're both cold-blooded cold killers. Blooded. They are cold. Yeah, that's right. You can see it in yep. everything they do I and see. how they, yep. you know, look at you when you ask a question, when they have these press yep. conferences that they aren't, unless they're paid for, you know, by W-E-E-I or whatever it is. Otherwise, yep. Yep. that's why I said, I don't know that I want to believe anything. I don't know that I believe the public utterances of either one of them. They're cold-blooded. No, I, I they're reptilian that. when it comes. So that's what why I, I'm just going to sit what back I haven't and had, I haven't been seduced by Belichick at dinner like you've been. Maybe Let's not. take a break. Coming up, the Bears say they're serious about leaving Soldier Field. Whoa, what's the word for that? Don't forget the time at the Playboy Mansion in L.A. either, but that's another story. How should the... <laughs> time to share some choice words with Wilbon. What's first? The possibility of the Bears leaving Soldier Field for the suburbs seems blank. It's Atlanta. Isn't this what the Atlanta Braves did? They left one stadium, built another stadium in the suburbs. They said most of their fans were in the yeah. suburbs, so they're going to relocate to the suburbs. Look, um, Soldier Field is the smallest capacity in the NFL. If they move, they can own all the parking. They can develop all the land. And, and football is not like baseball. Baseball, people get angry because it's, it's 82 trips. In football, it's only eight trips um, I'm going to yield to you because this is your team, but I think since 2000 there have been 20 new stadiums and most of them are located in the same general area and people are okay with it. It's greedy. And it's fine. You can be, you can, you, you can be greedy. And certainly a great many owners, and particularly it seems to me the ones in the NFL are, for all the points you just made, the Bears would like to develop the land and, you know, have developers put up condos and homes and townhouses yeah, and retail. Yeah. And they can do this in Arlington Heights, which is where we're talking about. But to move from an iconic location, maybe the most iconic location in pro football, to go to Arlington Heights. Let me just tell you this. It's well, dumb. Lambo and they're not going to get a dome stadium in the Super Bowl. They're not. Because nobody wants to go to Febu Chicago in February. I'm from Chicago, and I'm trying to get the hell out in February. So that's stupid. The whole thing's greedy. It may happen, but it would be also another word, stupid. Next. The Pelicans should feel blank about Zion's foot injury. They should be shaken. He broke his foot. This can reoccur. He plays with such force. He jumps with such force. Landing is so hard for him. He's now got a broken foot. He had a knee injury. He had a hand injury. Most of us have always wondered, how long does he have? This feels, Mike, it feels like you can hear the clock ticking. And that at some point, Zion Williamson is going to jump up in the air and land and break every single bone in his body because of the ferocity with which he's built. He's not brittle like Tua. You can't be that big and be brittle, but it looks like you know, it's not going to last a long time. He hasn't even been to the playoffs yet. Two years. He averaged 27 this year. They didn't make the playoffs. He's Mike Trout. Tone is perilous, is what it is, for all the reasons you just described and other reasons. I mean, Tony, they just shipped out. Look, they got two All-Stars. They got Brandon Ingram and they've got Zion. But they shipped out a, a third potential All-Star in ball and shipped him to Chicago. Look, you know, I, I, I really like and respect over a long period of time Griff. That team's that club's general manager. But, Tone, it looks like, look, they're not making the playoffs this year. They're just not. Not in the loaded West. Not unless somebody they just acquired has some meteoric rise out of nowhere. And tell you something else, Tone, you could almost bet on. They ain't making the playoffs next year either. The West, come on, both conferences actually are 10 teams deep. 
And New Orleans so ain't great. one of those teams. So there's a whole lot of factors going in there, not just the broken so foot. Great. Not just the broken foot. You got New Orleans. You got New Orleans being two years away from being two years away. Yeah, Let's take one last. Happy time, people. Happy 36th birthday, Calvin Johnson. Johnson was a meteor in the NFL. He burned brightly. He burned out quickly. He retired from the Lions at age 30, an echo of Barry Sanders retiring from the Lions at the same age. Both were elected to the Hall of Fame without hesitation. Johnson set the NFL record for receiving yards in one season in 2012 with 1,964. He had 83 touchdowns in nine seasons. He was a home run threat on every snap. Recently, the Lions celebrated Johnson's Hall of Fame induction at Ford Field, but Lions fans booed the words of Sheila Ford Hamp, one of the owners. Lions fans seem likely sick of their best players leaving early amid all the losing there. In the 55 years since the first Super Bowl, the Detroit Lions are the worst franchise in the NFL. They've never reached the Super Bowl. They have won just one playoff game in 55 years. You know, Tony, when Calvin Johnson retired at age 30, as you mentioned, I just thought it was a cruel trick on Lions fans considering Barry Sanders had gone out too early. If Barry Sanders sticks around two, three more seasons, maybe just two, he winds up as then the all-time leading rusher in the NFL, but he just said enough, enough of this. And it's, it's sort of cool now to see Barry back in commercials and I see him, you know, playing golf sometimes. It's just good to see Barry Sanders. Still looks like he could go for about 100 yards in a game right now. Happy anniversary, Arvidas Sabonis. On this day 26 years ago, Sabonis signed with the Portland Trail Blazers, the team that had drafted him nine years previous. When Sabonis was drafted in 1986, you could make the case he was the best big man in the world. He was the center of the Soviet Union Olympic basketball team that won the gold medal in Seoul in 1988 prompting the United States to switch over from college kids to pros. Bill Walton once called Sabonis, quote, a 7-3 Larry Bird. The Cold War kept Sabonis from the NBA for years, and when he joined Portland at age 30, knee injuries had slowed him to a crawl. Still, Sabonis played nine seasons in Portland, averaging 12 points and seven rebounds. His rookie year, he averaged 15 and eight. Sabonis' son, DeMontis, is already a two-time All-Star with the Indiana Pacers. There were people at the time who thought that Arvidas Sabonis, his father, was the best prospect in the world. I sat next to you as we watched Arvidas Sabonis beat the United States for that medal you talked about. I don't know that I've ever seen you in a worse mood. Do you remember what that felt like sitting there watching that in Seoul, great South player. Korea? Great player. He was great. Yeah, felt empty, but he's a great player. Happy trails to Manny Pacquiao's boxing career. At 42 years old, Pacquiao announced his retirement last night, a month after losing to Jordinus Ugas. Now, most boxers retire multiple times and return to the ring multiple times, and this is Pacquiao's first retirement. Pacquiao's one of the all-time greats. He held 12 different titles in eight different divisions, starting at 108 pounds, going up to 154. His record is 62-8-2 with 39 knockouts, and his partnership with Freddie Roach is one of the iconic fighter-trainer pairings. Pacquiao may be best remembered for this thrashing of Oscar De La Hoya in 2008, and his 2015 flight with Floyd Mayweather that shattered revenue records. In his announcement, Pacquiao said, quote, Goodbye, boxing. Thank you for changing my life. I can't imagine that I just heard the final bell, unquote. By the way, Mike, he's running for president yeah, of the is. Philippines. The Mayweather fight was a fraud because Mayweather ducked them for at least three years and the fight should have been five years earlier. And it might have been one of the great fights of all time. So no, no one's ever going to get me to say he's the GOAT, Mayweather, because he ducked Pacquiao for years. Uh, let's go to the big finish. Let's the NBA it. says unvaccinated players won't be paid if they can't play due to local safety protocols. Your thoughts? Good is my first thought. I'm going to leave it there with that because it's my predominant thought. Good. Cristiano Ronaldo scored a late goal to lead Manchester United to a win in the Champions League. Break it down, Mr. Soccer. It was a late goal and it helped him win. <laughs> Andy Dalton <laughs> practiced today on a limited basis. Who should start on Sunday for your team, Dalton or Fields? It doesn't matter. I mean, the Dalton, it doesn't matter. You're going to re replace the coach and the GM. The PGA Tour stop at Torrey Pines in January will finish on Saturday in prime time to avoid going against the NFL championship games. Does that make sense? Of course it does. It's suicidal to go against the NFL, especially the playoffs. Last one. The Sky beat the Sun in double OT last night. Is that significant? Yes, they won game one against the one seed. Courtney Vandersloot triple-double, 18 assists. Cheryl Swoops, the only other person with a playoff triple-double. Great win for the Sky.
We're out of time. Trying to do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. And by the way,